Hey, what's going on guys? It's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today we're going to talk about the Seagate storage expansion card. This bad boy is $220 for one terabyte. Not the best bang for your buck on storage size, but it does offer next gen performance and load times and yada yada yada. We're going to get into that in a moment and actually show you some real benchmarks so you see how this compares to the internal drive. But I wanted to cover this. So, so if you have a Series S or X and you have more Series X or games than the internal drive supports, this is your only option right now. Xbox does not let you copy next gen games onto external drives. It's either the internal or the storage expansion card. So with that being said, if you have a lot of those games, just I'll save you the time now, this is the only drive you can get right now. If you have a lot of other games from Game Pass, you know, there's a lot of games migrating over that you may be playing because you only have one console now, you can use an external SSD or even an external mechanical drive on the new Series X or S. So I'm going to get into some benchmarks shortly because I tested all three of these against the internal drive to see uh, if there really is a massive difference in performance and how good is this compared to the internal drive so you know if it's worth the performance upgrade or if you're losing any performance or not. I do want to do a quick name drop. I never do this. Um, I'm not getting paid to do this. In fact, this was purchased. I didn't. This was not sent to me for review. Um, I'm on a lot of Discord servers and one of the ones I've really liked lately is the Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X. Discord server. It's a server dedicated to next gen for Xbox. There's a lot of really cool people on there, guys and girls. It's an active bunch. Everyone's really friendly there. I'm going to put a link in the description below. So if you're looking at this video, you probably have a next gen console. And if you're on Discord, it's a great server to check out. So I like that community enough. I wanted to name drop them here for you. Uh, so hopefully I see you online there. Gadgetry Tech is the username. So with that being said, I'm going to start uh, going over some benchmarks. We'll show you how these drives compare to each other and then give you some final thoughts at the end. Okay, so before I get into the results, I just want to explain the test methodology. I recorded everything that I did and then I analyzed the videos in Adobe Premiere and measured it frame by frame to get the exact count. This wasn't a stopwatch situation. That's why even though there is a slight margin of error here, this is actually accurate down to the frame that I recorded. I did it three times per test for consistency, averaged them out, and then did the comparison that you see here. So going for the Xbox uh, Series X internal versus the expansion card here from Seagate, you can see if I load Fallout 4 Museum of Freedom, you get 6.55 seconds of load time to load that mission, whereas the internal drive is 6.48. Gears of 5 Boot Camp, 7 seconds for the expansion card, 6.88 for the internal. Campaign one, uh, the act uh, or campaign act one load for Gears five was 8.57 for the expansion versus 8.75 for the internal. Horizon, Forza Horizon, the first mission took 22 seconds basically on both drives, so it's very very similar here. Destiny two, this game is notorious for long load times, so if there's any change or chance of a larger difference between two drives, it's going to show up here. And on the Nessus planet loading cistern. Uh, it's 38 seconds for the external versus 37.33, so almost identical. The only time I found that the expansion car was slightly slower was when you load the Destiny Tower, which is infamous for having an insanely long load time. The tower took 62.94 seconds on the expansion card and 57.88 on the internal. Cold War is much more consistent with Campaign Act 1 loading in 13.27 versus 13.22 seconds. And then the new outbreak mode is 3.78 versus 3.72. And then if I loaded the multiplayer, uh, a custom map. And the reason why I do uh, offline is because I don't want to be infected by or affected by network load times for other players. So everything is ben uh, benchmarked on offline mode. And that was 5.65 seconds for the internal versus uh, 5.8 for the external. Okay, things get interesting when we start testing games that aren't optimized for Series X or Series X because now we can leverage the Samsung T5 SSD and the Western Digital Passport Drive. When I load Battle Royale practice mode, again, I'm staying offline because I don't want to rely on other player connections to impact the load times. The internal and the expansion card are still very similar. 9.51 versus 9.22 from internal versus the expansion card. When you get into the Samsung USB uh, 3.0 T5 SSD, that is 11.45 seconds, and then the mechanical drive is over double the load time of the internal drive. So this starts adding up because this is not the full-fledged Battle Royale. It's a limited mode, so it loads quicker. And having over double the load time, you're going to start noticing that a lot more. The Samsung drive isn't as big of a difference. Going into plunder training, this is the only one that might come down to the way the memory controller works. 
but the internal versus the expansion card were again very similar. Uh, 7.9 versus 7.4. The Samsung SSD, I did test this more than once. It was 6.27 seconds, so it was the fastest one here. And then the mechanical drive is naturally the slowest. Going into loading another offline custom mode uh, for multiplayer in Cold War, um, we have the crash map. And this was identical for internal versus ex expansion. The Samsung SSD was essentially identical. It's only less than two tenths of a second slower. And then the mechanical drive was only two seconds slower. So this is well optimized for multiplayer. When I get into the, um, the campaign, this is much more demanding on the drive. And the internal excelled here. It was 11.85 second load time, whereas the expansion car was 14.5, 14.6 for the SSD from Samsung. And then the mechanical skyrocketed to 43 seconds. So significant load time again. Going into Fallout 4, the Museum of Freedom mission is again nearly identical for internal versus expansion. The Samsung SSD is about a second and a half slower, and then the mechanical again is uh, over four times slower than the internal drive. Now I threw this last chart in for fun because I wanted to see how fast the Series X was versus my PS5 for load times. PlayStation, as you know, made a big deal about how fast their new custom built SSDs were. You get less capacity, it's 865 gigs, you get even less once formatted. So their big promise was that you'd get extremely good performance. Now when I go into uh, Destiny, which is optimized for both, um, the load times are similar. Now the Xbox is faster at 57.8 seconds versus 62 seconds for the tower load on the um, PlayStation 5. That's within a pretty similar margin of error because the expansion uh, card did the same on Xbox as well. Now the PlayStation 5 was a little bit faster when I loaded the Nessus checkpoint, uh, the cistern waypoint on the planet Nessus. This is where things get interesting. When I played Rocket League, and I again did this more than once, the Xbox loaded Rocket League at 2.65 seconds, whereas the PlayStation loaded it in 11.75 seconds. This was an offline practice like exhibition map with just bots, so again getting out the multiplayer aspect. That is a big delta there. Now, when I load the Call of Duty Battle Royale practice, the same thing repeats. I got only nine and a half seconds on Xbox, but it took 25 seconds to load it on PlayStation 5. And then the COD Plunder training, the Warzone Plunder training was 7.93 versus 15.45. That is an insane difference in performance. It really goes to show how fast the internal and the Seagate expansion card really is. All right, guys, hopefully this review helped you figure out if this is necessary for you or not. The good news is the performance is nearly identical to the drive that's built into the Xbox. So if you're concerned about performance differences and where you should put one game over the other, don't stress about that. It'll work on either of them just fine. Now, if you have more than one Xbox, you can move this from Xbox to Xbox. As long as you're signed into a profile that's authorized to play that game, you can just plug this into any next-gen console and you'll be able to play it or next-gen Xbox, I should say. So it's a cool drive, it's fast. Is it overpriced? I think it still is. The prices should come down over time, but honestly, if you need the capacity right now, this is the only way to do it. Now, if you play a lot of legacy games and it's basically just stuff from Game Pass that was meant for Xbox One, but your new Series X or S is your only console, just get a USB 3 uh, SSD from Samsung or whoever else because you're, the performance difference is somewhat negligible. You're not gonna notice it as much and you get a much better bang for your buck. This is really for all your next gen stuff without any sacrifice made in performance. So it's a good drive for what it's meant for. Not everyone needs it, but I hope after watching this, you determined what's best for you. If you liked the video, please hit like. Uh, we'd love to see any comments. If you got questions or feedback, don't forget to subscribe. You see a lot of cool stuff that we're cranking out lately, including the new Bang & Olufsen um, wireless gaming headset for Xbox. The new $500 one shows up soon. I'm gonna be reviewing that in about two days. So uh, stay tuned for that. And as always, thank you so much for the support. I will see you all next time. Bye.